everybody, and welcome back to Is It Kino, your favorite movie review podcast. I'm your host, Diesel Jones, joined as always by Thomas the Tank Florian. Yeah, I actually went and watched some Thomas the Tank Engine, and he turned out to be a brat in the first episode, so how could he ever come back from that one? Would you really rather review Thomas the Tank Engine than this movie? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> I would not. <laughs> and uh, uh, what's another character? Joey King. And uh, also joining us is E. Rich King. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Monkey, this is, this is the quiet car. You have to be quiet in this one. Oh, well, then Florian's going to have to leave because he makes us scream quite a bit. <laughs> well, clearly you'll just have to power through it. Like well, this movie, the most offensive <laughs> we're here to review the new Brad Pitt action ensemble cast film called Bullet Train. And let me just say, probably one of my favorite movies of the year so far. And the fact that it is uh, a pretty original, fun ensemble cast action film that's not really based on a famous IP. It's not a legacy sequel. It's not it, cape shit. It is based on a book. Though. But nothing that anybody's ever heard of. Nothing famous. Yeah, yeah. Most likely but you haven't. My point is, given all these great, you know, descriptors, uh, naturally the film was a huge failure, box office bomb, <laughs> and nobody really wanted to that. see it, despite how good it was. So I'm yeah, here to really let everybody know. Unless you're Tom Cruise in a jet or a flying superhero, you're kind of fucked at the box office. This oh, weekend, Memorial much. Day weekend, or Labor Day, what fucking holiday weekend is it right now? Labor Day. Labor, Labor Day. Day. They're saying that the, the top two movies in theaters are fucking Top Gun and Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> what the <laughs> hell? One movie that's like 10 months old and one movie that's like four months old. Yeah, and they're still like the top two contenders of the box office. Nobody wanted to see Bullet Train, and uh, maybe we can convince yeah. them to. But I don't even know. Did you guys like this movie? What did you think? Hell yeah, it was great. I, I got a hat just so I could look like Brad Pitt on a, <laughs> in a train station, you know? Uh, I was skeptical about this movie because when... I thought, the, I thought the trailers were all right, but I feel like we've gotten this kind of movie before. It seemed like a John Wick or a Neon... Not Neon Demon, fucking... Uh, it, what's the one with Charlie Theron? Uh... Girl John Wick. <laughs> we got girl, girl John Wick. It looked like it was just kind of using a Snowpiercer kind of layout with like train cars that were different, uh, which is not really the case in the actual movie. I was kind of surprised that I liked the movie, especially by like the halfway point uh, when I saw the the plot kind of come, start to come together. Yeah, it, it the story and all the characters it's told in a you know not necessarily a straightforward way. There's lots of flashbacks mm -hmm. and character backstories and stuff, and everything. I think it's a really clever uh, script because everything kind of comes together in a in a neat bow right. by the end, and it's just it's so much uh, fun and hijinks on this train. Uh, the movie kind of reminds me a bit of uh, uh, movies like Hotel Artemis or uh, yeah, Bad yeah. Times at the El Royale, but I think this is like the superior version. Like they finally nailed it. Those movies, I felt like something was missing, and I think this one right. filled it in. Yeah, for sure, especially that Hotel Artemis comparison, which is like, Hotel Artemis just felt so hollow to me, and I was worried that this would be the same way, but uh, yeah, this was definitely good. It was just so crazy seeing like the, the two hitmen at first, but then like they, they fail completely, and then the, the story just goes after someone else, and, and it just becomes some kind of battle royale. It's, it's just, <laughs> yeah. it totally the hitmen are almost the main it. characters in a way. Yeah, but they, they mess up so hard, they they lose the suitcase and the guys immediately. <laughs> it's just, it was just amazing. Well, yeah. I think Brad Kit or Brad Pitt is my standout character because he's uh, he's like his his gimmick is that he's extremely unlucky, but the unluckiness leads to success. So I, mm -hmm. it's kind of like Domino in Deadpool two, but more entertaining and fun, and <laughs> ties into the plot more. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure what to make of him at first because he's getting this like zen kind of like just accept the universe, whatever the universe brings to you is is what you deserve or what what should happen to you. And I wasn't sure what the movie was meaning by that. Like, is that something we're taking seriously in the movie or is that just kind of some dumb thing that his character is running through? I think by the time uh, 
<laughs> the film leads to like a giant plane crash giant or the, the, wreck, yeah, yeah the train wreck and like everybody's flying around i don't know if we need to take it too seriously at that point like it, it does become a little bit cartoonish at the end and people should not be surviving uh, all these horrible things that are happening yeah, yeah, I think when the huge train wreck happens and then everyone who is in the car is alive, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I, I, f- I feel like a lot of the stuff that, that Brad Pitt says is like really annoying and cringe, but I, I just, I guess he's just so charming that it, it still works. And, and he's just so annoying with trying to be peaceful all the time while everyone's trying to do their job. Instead. No, I think that's great. I, he's like the anti-John Wick because he doesn't want to fight and he still ends up winning all of his fights. Like he's he's just defending himself and he, you know, he still finds a way to survive everything that happens. Mm-hmm. Oh man, he really did have like crazy bad luck, didn't he? Can you believe he got hired for the job as a replacement? But, for, for Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I, well, I forgot there were a few uh, celebrity cameos in the movie too. Like even at the very end, uh, what's her name shows up. Blindside. Uh, fuck yeah, the Blindside, the Gravity Woman. Yeah, Sandra Bullock. That's it, Sandy Bullock. Yeah, this movie. Uh, I, was... I thought it was Charlie Theron on the phone. Oh yeah, <laughs> I didn't realize it was Sandra Bullock. Uh, do you guys think this movie suffers from like Marvel itis? Is this movie trying to to have like quips and like little celebrity cameos and stuff, or do you think it, it kind of stands on its own? It kind of reminded me of Deadpool, and I think like it's the same director. It is, yeah, it's the Deadpool director of Deadpool too, I think, or maybe yeah. Number one. I feel like there there's like there's like a tinge of Deadpool, and that was one of the things I was. Well, I'm glad that there is like hard. Uh, Erich, you cut out a little bit. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I thought it was just going to be like a, an all but Deadpool movie, essentially, but I think it's a bit <laughs> smarter than that. Yeah, it's way better. Like, imagine if it was something stupid like like Detective Pikachu, where it's just like Deadpool, <laughs> but it's a Pikachu, you know? That? <laughs> a Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad they didn't Pikachu this one, you know? Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, this is an ensemble cast film. Uh, are there any particular leads here that you guys want to dive into? Any characters that you're just dying to, you know, get some stuff off your chest about? I, this might be the first time I've liked Aaron Taylor Lee Johnson in a movie. I, I cannot remember anything else that I've seen him in that I was like, oh, he's he's cool. He's, he's good. Uh, wasn't he uh, Quicksilver? He's Lemon, I think. Yeah, he's Quicksilver in the Avengers Age of Ultron. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess he wasn't that good in that movie. <laughs> His accent no. was not very good. <laughs> but I didn't even know that was him in this movie until like I looked it up after. Like he kind of disappears into the role. I think. Yeah, he is a very chameleon actor at times. I still don't know which one he is. Tell me. Which he was one the he the, is. the the white guy of the two uh, assassin guys. Oh, but that was hit. Wow, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he's not even British. That doesn't make any sense. Alan Taylor, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Actually, I don't know if he is British or not. Well, he is now. Hmm. Well, Florian, so, uh, did any of these characters pop out to you that you wanted to, t- to talk about? Well, I, I, I guess I'm interested in the the Mexican one who, who's just really sincere about about oh. revenge, but he's completely misguided. You like Bad Bunny the most, Florian. Wait, that was Bad Bunny? That was Bad Bunny! <laughs> I don't know that anything about Bunny. this man. He's like a rapper, right? He's a rapper, oh and he's going to be El Muerto in the uh, El Muerto comic book movie they're going to make. Uh, so he must be a pretty good actor then. I mean, he he blended into this movie. I didn't you know, think he was uh, amateur or anything. I, I thought he was good for what he, ha- what he had here. I, I really like the flashbacks, the, like, you get everybody's origin story, essentially, in... <laughs> A lot of these. Yeah, this movie really felt like a live action anime in that way. Like, this could have just right? been like right. a fucking One Piece arc on a train. <laughs> wow, I, I didn't even consider that. I, I think the it's movie just, is heavily influenced by anime. I mean, it takes place in Japan, it's on a bullet train, and then like the action and the backstories. I don't know. Maybe it, that's just the tenets of all storytelling, but I was getting some anime vibes out of this thing. Oh, I mean, like, it, it is written by a Japanese author, the original book, and uh, all of the characters should be Japanese, but uh, they Americanized it. Wow. <laughs> For the best. So, it, like, it makes sense to me that you'd. you'd make it it would feel like an anime or it would feel like like kind of a manga setup since it's japanese uh inherently 
It, it's so weird how they went for that whole wedding backflash just for that guy to be killed off, but then I guess it was still <laughs> somewhat relevant. But, like, everyone was... Or not everybody was there, but, like, the Hornet character was there. Like, the Hornet was the poisoner who poisoned everyone at the wedding, and then she... Like, spoiler for the movie, she is in this, like, plush character costume throughout the movie who, <laughs> like, Brad Pitt punches... Uh, to get get away from in the beginning of the movie and then yeah I, I, I loved all that stuff yeah I, I wish Joker's girlfriend was in the movie more because since she's wearing that costume the whole time she's really like only in one scene and she was also Domino in Deadpool too so like that's they, right pulling out all the Deadpool characters I'm trying to think like Michael Shannon is in this movie at the very end uh He's doing a very odd Russian accent where <laughs> I love Michael Shannon quite a bit. I don't think this was the best role. He does have enough menace for a role like this. So it's not quite but... premium rush, Michael Shannon. Oh, man, I fucking love him in premium rush. Holy <laughs> yeah. shit. That is an underrated movie. That is a good sure. one. Absolutely. Well, well, all we're doing is just talk about the actors. That's I never expected that. Well, Florian, what do you want to talk about? Well, I'm... <laughs> I mean, I, I guess are we doing spoilers? Uh, I already gave away basically everything. Yeah, I mean, I mean, nobody has actually seen this movie, so I feel bad about spoiling them. But fuck oh, it, I mean, man. we might as well. <laughs> I mean, if it, if it makes people see the movie, maybe they'll forget everything we say and then watch the movie. And it's also like, who cares about the spoilers in this movie? Well, yeah. I, I think you should actually care because, like, I feel like the the plan from the from the bad guy was actually pretty interesting. You know, I think it really came together. And, I mean, you probably look at the movie totally differently. So I guess we probably should avoid the spoilers then. Wow. <laughs> what do we have to say then? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's like, this is just like a fun, good action movie. I don't know if we can even do a full podcast on it. Did, did, did you guys really like the action of the movie? Because I thought it was just all right. There wasn't any, like, action sequence that I was, like, wowed over or, like, thought was amazing. It was just very competent, very well-framed action, I thought. I, I like the the creativity of Brad Pitt winning his fights without really fighting back, but otherwise, yeah, yeah. It, like you're not getting the raid levels of uh, fight choreography right, right. here. It's not a raid or a John Wick or. But it's really more those, like, the yeah. the characters and the flow of the story is more fun than the fighting itself. I think. Right, right. I, I did really like Joey King. I, I don't know what she's been in other than this. Uh, the but, kissing uh, booth one, two, and three. <laughs> Oh, God. And, and she played Colin Hanks' daughter in Fargo season one, I think. Oh, uh, okay. Fargo. Like, there there will be an entire library of Netflix movies that I just have no awareness of. And, like, in 50 years from now, people will be talking to me about all these fucking dumbass Netflix movies. <laughs> and I'll just be slack jawed being, what the fuck are you talking Wait, about? Wait, so we shouldn't come back next week and review the Kissing Booth trilogy? <laughs> no. Oh, no, well, me God. and Florian will be here for that then. Jesus yeah. Christ. If you want to. Why don't I don't watch want to. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> why, why don't you watch stuff for Netflix? It's so convenient. I watch for Netflix that I want to watch, not just anything that's on there. Oh, you don't watch you uh, like... movies made for teenage girls all the time, you rich? You got better no, shit to watch? No. <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with you, man? missing out well he's he's been busy watching uh the new lord of the rings i get maybe this can be a, a dual review because i i did attempt to watch that show florian did wow. you try to watch it attempt i and watched failed. it yeah oh my god after I two different attempts i still cannot finish episode one it is the most boring shit what ever you, put to what, film what are you climbing on what's the what's, what's that the issue well what, so what's the issue what so what to is? compare it to house of the dragon that's also mm -hmm. something like it's a prequel and they, you know, people are mad that they uh, race swapped some characters. I don't give a fuck about any of that. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's it's curious how uh, supposedly these would both these shows would have the same issue from all these racist fans in the audience. And yet only Rings of Power is getting shit on. I'm starting to think it's because <laughs> the quality of the show is just <laughs> genuinely bad. House of the Dragon. I don't know who any of these characters are. But by the end of episode one, I have a pretty good sense of who they are. This show, I don't, I can't even name one person. I don't know if anybody even has a character in that show. It's like so do, do bland. Do you like Lord of the Rings? Well, like not Rings one worse. Uh, Lord of the Rings is good. I like the movies. I don't like The okay. Hobbit. This is like The Hobbit, but even worse. 
A couple, uh, a couple of these characters are from Lord of the Rings, so I figure like you'd at least have an in from them. But I, you should definitely. You're gonna have to tell least... me which ones because I didn't recognize anybody. Well, uh, the main character Galadriel was a. Uh, uh, Kate Blanchett in the original. Oh, so, I mean, yeah, so if it's a different actor, I'm not going to know. Oh, okay. Well, obviously it would be. Why not? It's like an elf who can live one billion years. Why not just get the same woman? And then she's just really old now. And they worked I on think. Better Call Saul. <laughs> That's true. That's well, true. I mean, the point is that it's like not the, the movie universe, but the book universe, so... Well, actually, it's not. They they are making shit up from what I've read because they don't own the rights to the actual yeah. prequel. So they're just making they have, shit up. They have the rights to the appendices of the Lord of the Rings, which is just a bunch of notes at the end of the book. Uh, and they're filling in a lot of gaps <laughs> of that. So. Yeah, and also but George R.R. Martin is like he's an executive producer on House of the Dragon and he's like he made the source material. So that's why I think the show is of a certain quality. Whereas this mm. like nobody who gives a fuck about Lord of the Rings was in the writer's room. That's the impression I'm getting. Wow. Yeah, but I don't know if that's better or worse because like I, I, I blame George R.R. R. Martin for what happened in Game of Thrones. Like, uh, uh, he shouldn't. Like he could, it wasn't his fault. It was uh, the, 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 the showrunners. Yeah, it, it was the showrunners. George R.R. R. Martin said he wanted 10 seasons, and, and those two guys said no. And they did the final <laughs> season in six episodes. So I don't think you can really blame George other than just not finishing his book. Not finishing his books when he should have, yeah. I mean, I guess that's a shame, but like, how are they going to make 10 seasons if he takes so goddamn long for each book? Like, he's probably going to die in like five years. It's not going to work out. Well, he could have just told them what's going to happen, and they could have fleshed it out and actually made okay, it Okay, Monkey, good. Here, here's, here's the problem, is that they started diverging from his books because they didn't know what to do and they, they knew they wanted to wrap up early, probably. So they didn't introduce Yeah, they thought they were going to go do Star didn't. Wars and that didn't work yeah. out. Yeah, <laughs> so they started cutting plot lines and you essentially can't end the same way in that, in that case. Yeah, so Game of Thrones was doomed to have a, a shitty ending because they just don't know how to end the story because they didn't make it. Uh, this new show, uh, Lord of the Rings shit, it's like, are they going to eventually lead into the Lord of the Rings we know and love, or is yeah. it just going to be 10 seasons this, of nothing? This show, I mean, so this show will lead into the prologue of the first movie trilogy. And then are uh, they going to, are they redoing the books, or they just say, okay, now go I, I watch the movie? The books. So what's even the I point of this shit? The <laughs> uh, it's just prequels. It's just, it's uh, just boring. Yeah. I don't know. Tell me you why it's good, because I, like. what am I missing? Because I could not, like, get behind any character. Um, I think the the show is beautiful to look at. They obviously have billions yeah. of dollars at play or whatever. So it, it, it's that. it's so beautiful. It's just crazy. Florian, I just, I just shut the fuck up. Day. You just said last episode. Uh, who cares if the She Hulk CGI is ugly? I don't watch entertainment. I don't watch a visual medium for it to look good. So I'm not going to listen to you <laughs> fucking say that the show looks good. Irrelevant Wait. coming from you. Wow, amazing. Yeah. I want to hear from you. Did Erich. you get to any of the Hobbit characters in the show? Yeah, I've, I'm almost done with episode one, but it's just like okay, so right. boring. I, it's like painful to finish. Yeah, like I think if you can't really get into elf shit for the most part, the show might not be for you. Uh, I like the uh, the Puerto Rican black elf. I don't know what race he is, but Aaron like Deer? he's he's like the closest thing to a good actor in the show. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Everybody else, like I'm not getting anything from them. Okay, I mean, there is a dwarf. The, all the dwarves are in the second episode, so you might oh, like boy. that a bit more. I can't wait. Finally, somebody who looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's all these really great-looking dwarves, and then there's just, like, one that's just, like, a fat black woman, and, and she's just <laughs> and nothing, you know? It would be great if she was just a fat black woman. Oh. Like, she wasn't even a dwarf. She just was accepted by their kind, and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she... Fun. Yeah, maybe it's just a human hobbit hybrid, you know? <laughs> no, I don't want to be a chud wow. who, who complains about, you know, diverse casting, because I truly, truly don't care. But I have seen some people ask the question of if this is a canon prequel to the movies and like all the elves and all the hobbits and stuff have so much, you know, mixed race diversity. And then in the movies, it's all white people. What happened? Where'd all those people go? Was there some sort yeah, of yeah, racial genocide? <laughs> Yeah, they also killed off most of the women, you know, so... Yeah, what's going on? It's pretty cool, I guess. Yeah, they just... Oh, racial genocide is pretty cool? 
Yeah, they just thought it was necessary, you know? And that's fair. <laughs> so do you like this show better or worse than The Hobbit? Uh, oh, much better, much better to me. Holy shit. <laughs> well, I, I still prefer The Hobbit. Oh, of course you do, Florian. <laughs> of course. I should have fucking known. I mean, there's not that much happening in it. You gotta, you gotta admit that, you know? What not happened yet. in the first Hobbit movie, you son of a bitch? Uh, two hours into the film, he says he's going on an adventure and leaves the house. Hell yeah. yeah. They sing three times or something. <laughs> There's 40 minutes of singing <laughs> in, uh, yeah. in Bilbo's fucking kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's already key, though. I, I don't know how you think it's worse. Is the extended version just like a full concert album of singing? <laughs> Uh, no, I guess they just added like a little prequel of, of Bilbo being small and, and, and Gandalf seeing him for the first time. Yeah. Thrilling. Yeah, I know. The, the best thing the show could do is uh, get Tom Bombadil in there, uh, who is currently <laughs> my profile picture on Discord. Yeah, you have yeah, been uh, Bombadil that. posting on Twitter lately, yeah. Erich. What's going on? Uh, I just love my, my guy Tom. He just uh, is the most powerful character in Lord of the Rings. He does not give a single shit about uh, the whole One Ring bullshit, and he just lives in the woods, fucks his wife, and uh, is happy and gay. Isn't he a libertarian or something? No. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're asking. I mean, I, I definitely talked to Tom Bombadil that was a libertarian, so I, I don't Whoa, know. You, you spoke really to the character? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? Hmm. I mean, sure, you've met him too, right, Mumkey? We're talking about a Lord of the Rings character in the books. Oh, he's definitely on your Discord. It's, I think it might be a different person. <laughs> what? No way. <laughs> uh, Erich, is it is it sacrilege for me to to? Is this a hot take to say uh, Song of Ice and Fire is better than Lord of the Rings? No, no. I, I think like if there's a certain amount of you can't come home again, uh, you can't go back to something like Lord of the Rings after you've seen like the the cool shit in. House of the Dragon or uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, I think when it comes to this it, fantasy it's stuff, it's more like it's more easy to get into. I think because it's not like tons of backstory. A lot of this shit that is in this uh, Lord of the Rings show is stuff that's in the Silmarillion, stuff that's in like the like histories that J.R.R. Tolkien invented, and that stuff is a little bit dry. It's definitely like reading the fucking Bible or a history book, <laughs> yeah. and. Game of Thrones does have its own history book with fire and blood, but I think it's much more accessible and much more easily read than the fucking War of the Rings stuff. Yeah, I think I, the what I the appeal for me is the the political intrigue and the, the scheming and all that. And I feel like Lord of the Rings is yeah. just more of a like a lighthearted adventure, which I guess, you know, right, you know, right. for each their own. But I feel like, uh, you know, it's just not doing it for me anymore. I need a little bit more. I, I like and enjoy both. I can get my political intrigue and dragon combat out of House of the Dragon, and I can get my uh, dwarves singing and fucking hammering away at rocks and shit in uh, uh, Rings of Power. So I'm happy with both. How many times I, I, have you binged the extended trilogy of Lord of the Rings? Uh, probably more times than I could count. Probably, wow, really? Probably 15 to 20. <laughs> what happened to you? I've seen him. I've probably. I mean, I don't. I don't sit there for twelve hours and binge the whole series. But I've. I've seen them all probably two or three times. Wow, that those are rookie numbers, man. That's crazy. Hey, yeah. I got those numbers up. I mean, I guess yeah, so. Really. I don't know. I think uh, Game of Thrones is more for me, maybe. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Obviously, I think that's perfectly fine. I mean, obviously, it's more like up to date. You know, they didn't really write that kind of political drama back then, did they? Especially not in fantasy. I mean, that's, I guess, H Martin might have invented that one. I don't know. Martin couldn't even Martin invent his own interested. middle initials. Like, he just had to copy everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Martin was always interested in, like, what was Aragorn's tax policy? What, what, did, what would Aragorn do to the orcs? Would he fucking do an orc genocide? Like, how do you solve an issue like that? Martin I mean, was always interested in those harder questions. I but, mean, I would... I would love to to have that explored in in any kind of media. Yeah, the Actually, impression like, I get from uh, Tolkien is that you know if a if a good man is a king, he'll be a good king. It, it, that is a good question. Okay, so what are the good policies then, Tolkien? Let's uh, you know, let's actually put the our money where your mouth is and let's see what a good king looks like. 
Well, I'm, I'm yeah. glad that you asked, because I got really deep into watching Lord of the Rings lore on YouTube. Okay. And, and there's apparently, like, well, you, you could find out what, what Aragorn's tax policy was, because, like, there's actually <laughs> what was a it? lot of... <laughs> well, there's a, a lot of <laughs> detail that, that goes into... I, I'll tell you. There's a lot of detail that, that he actually writes about about stuff like that in the in the books that didn't make it to the movies, but you, you know there's stuff there. So so the theory is that, that I guess Aragon would basically just like collect the taxes from the, from the lords, and he wouldn't interfere too much in them because like the 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 land would already have like lords that 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 reign over like each city or whatever. So he would be mostly hands off unless there's like someone being evil, you know, and then he would kill him. So I, I guess it's it's the best you can ask for because like if you're a bad king, then then you're all about yourself and you want to impose your will. But but Aragorn wouldn't do that. So so there you go. <laughs> That's his policy. Enlightening. I, I've I've truly seen the light now. With yep. the orcs, what should he do with the orcs, uh, Florian? Concentration well, camps. Def- yeah, I definitely think that they need to be genocided. You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, does it does it change that they were once elves in some way? Uh, no, not at all. Be- no? I mean, You're I know not- it's called the one drop rule, E. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> You're no, not going to one- try to uh, make a uh, conversion camp for the. Uh- <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry. Like the cannibals, you can't stop them. I'm sorry, but well, you know, they said meats actually- back on the menu. I mean, look. If if hobbits are a different race than orcs, that's not cannibalism, is it? Uh well, it is because all people are are one, okay? Except, Except for, for the orcs, orcs, which are cannibals. <laughs> well, I guess they are still part of it. They're just like part of the evil side of. Would people. you eat monkey? Not monkey. Would you eat monkey, uh, <laughs> Florian? I probably wouldn't. <laughs> you wouldn't. It depends on how it's prepared. I'll eat like a deep fried monkey leg for sure. What Maybe some monkey, monkey brains. brains. Yeah, brains might be yeah. good. <laughs> I can't get any dumber from eating it. <laughs> so w- would you guys say I should, like, you know, power through, finish episode one, sit through episode... Should I get extremely stoned to finish watching this uh-huh. show? I- I'd say get stoned and watch the rest of the first episode. I would try the second episode, but if, if by the second episode you're not you're not clicking with it, then don't, don't give it any more uh, mind. I-, I feel like I the mean- writing is trying to be more deep and intelligent than it actually is. And there's like a viral scene on Twitter where at, at the beginning of the episode, he's, he's talking like, oh, uh, what's the difference between a rock and a, and a boat? Oh, well, the rock only looks down and that's why he sinks, but the boat looks up. So that's why it floats. Like just complete fucking nonsense. You, like, <laughs> there's not even a metaphor lesson you can learn. He's just saying shit that doesn't make any fucking sense. Are you kidding me? Oh, a rock sinks because it looks down? <laughs> what? Well, that's. I'm sorry, but I guess it's, you, it's, it's just a rock, you know? You gotta look up sometimes, and then you'll, you'll see the wisdom. So if the rock had a more optimistic outlook, it would float. Yeah, because then it'd be no. a boat. This shit is the retarded. Rock and the boat are <laughs> metaphors for people and action. Yeah, but you don't get to choose if you're a rock or a boat. So what, what lesson am no, I supposed but- to take? <laughs> If you're only worried about sinking and getting down deep and not actually like looking to the world and exploring and getting out there, you won't. You just won't. You'll stay. Does a rock even care about sinking? (laughs) Like what does a rock rock care if it's at the bottom of an ocean? The rock isn't the rock. Well then his metaphor sucked. (laughs) Clearly. (laughs) The rock is people. The rock is what you're what you're focused on. Well, I, I don't know if you should watch it, but I, I mean, the, the dwarf stuff is mildly more interesting, but like, I guess if you're not into this, he, I, I guess it's not happening. I mean, I like the dwarf stuff because it reminds me of The Hobbit, so. <laughs> oh, God. I, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I think it's perfectly fine to not like something you just go to the things you do like unless you like to hate watch things like i do sometimes i then, wanted uh, to hate watch this but like <laughs> it's just too boring D- does it pick up an episode to like do the characters actually start getting fleshed out a bit well so the, far it's just like guy. grand landscapes and like just groups of adventurers doing shit and i'm like i don't know who these people are yeah well, i think they they get a bit more 
Well, you'd probably like the part about the Black Elf because because he's in it a lot. So I guess that might be interesting to you. And I did read that he might just be Puerto Rican. I don't know if he's actually black, but maybe he's half and half. I mean, I, I feel like he's probably like the blackest person in the whole show. Well, so was Gus, and I, I don't think he was supposed to be black. I think it's well, interesting. They, the they call they him have... black Shut in up, the boy. show. <laughs> He's from uh, South I think America. It's the show that they're being racist against him for being an elf and not for being black. Well, I'm guessing the, none of the characters see race in the show, right? No, no. Yeah, they just care that he's an elf. He's yeah, a yeah. PT, PT. The way that it should yeah, be. That, that's so weird. Like, you'd think people would be more racist against like different colored versions of themselves rather than against elves. Like, well, Amazon has created a, a perfect fantasy world where nobody cares. Like, persecuting them or like watching over them quote unquote so of course that's the group you're gonna go after i mean do they even collect taxes i feel like them watching over them is just like a net good like wow please don't watch over us and protect us from orcs elves you feel like you don't have freedom you're probably not going to be happy about that but there's fucking orcs in this world i I wish i wish there was elves it's it's you're being watched over because a couple generations ago your great great grandparents were fucking around with Morgoth. It's not anything you've done. It's what your fucking great great grandparents did. Yeah, but they're watching everywhere. It doesn't even have anything to do with that, apparently. Yes, it does. It's in the Southlands. It's not anywhere else. It's it's right around where Mordor was. I mean, well, it turns out they were right to watch there. I don't know. What is the... What do you mean? It, it turns what? out it was right. I, I guess the racial profiling was correct. I guess the Asians <laughs> have some connections with Morgoth over there, you know? Uh, okay, I, I will, if I can get some pot, I will get stoned as fuck sometime and binge this show. It might not be, you know, for months from now, but maybe it'll happen. Yeah. Uh, because if it is just, like, supposed to be a beautiful spectacle and, you know, I don't have to take the, the script writing too seriously, maybe I could get something out of it. Uh, do you guys have any final thoughts on Bullet Train or on the first two episodes of this show? <laughs> uh, Bullet Train, better than I expected. Definitely worth seeing at least once. Uh, I like most of the performances. The action was all right. And uh, I just wish it did better at the box office. And then with Rings of Power, I'm interested to see more. It's a beautiful production. Uh show looks amazing. It's nice to see some first age stuff on screen for the very first time. Uh, <laughs> I like Tolkien stuff. It is not very true to some of the Tolkien stuff. Uh oh! The but they kind of had to do that to make any kind of show worth seeing in hmm. some ways. You okay. don't want to show where there is one set of elf characters, the human characters die in the first season probably, and then either it's an entirely different cast of characters going forward, or it takes them forever to do anything because elves are so fucking long lived that uh, <laughs> that's just how you're going to have to do it. <laughs> Thousands of years pass in, in between at them doing anything. Wait, so is it, does this show have like the, the anime fucked up lowly shit of like, Oh, this little tiny girl is a hundred years old. They're not doing uh, that. Are well, they? <laughs> that's one of the deals with uh, that, that black uh, elf character. He's probably a couple hundred thousand years old yeah but that's an adult but they're not doing that to like a child right no no (laughs) no. but that woman is probably like 10 lifetimes younger than him so uh okay yeah obviously i mean she's obviously not an elf Uh, i'm gonna say for my final thoughts the box office revenue of bullet train is a travesty because now they there's no motivation for them to try to make movies like that like the fact that Mm -hmm. thor love and thunder somehow squeaked nearly a billion dollars in this movie like i don't think even got like 50 million just go a complete failure can brad pitt not get people into the movie theaters anymore like oh brad pitt starring in a new action movie i'll fuck it Let's just no, let's man. go see Spider Man again. Haven't you seen that stupid Moon movie that he was in? Like, I bet no one was. Ad that Astra, movie. that was a good movie. Oh really? Damn. I, I like that one. I liked it. I've only liked that movie less as I've thought about it. It's more interesting <laughs> than the Rings of Power. I mean, right. I feel like I feel like nobody would watch that one, but I guess I might be wrong. I mean, I like it because I like space. It just it makes me sad when I see a somewhat original. I don't care if it's based off of a book nobody's read. It doesn't matter to me. It's in my view, it's an original, new concept, new movie. 
c characters that I haven't known for 30 years and I'm going to see just for fucking nostalgia. And it failed. And we're just going to get legacy sequels and cape shit forever. <laughs> and I guess we deserve it because we don't support like things that are slightly original. Well, I guess I definitely watch the... <laughs> the Lord of the Rings prequel because of this reason. I, I definitely love seeing like hobbits again and dwarves. Elves not as much, but okay. I, I, I mean, Galadriel is cool. But yeah, I, I guess I'll watch it for that reason. It's probably not that engaging. But Bullet Train is great. It has a, a great story. A lot of cool things happen out of nowhere. And you should all go watch it. Please, please watch Boring. it. Florian, go watch the fucking Hobbit movies again. <laughs> he will gladly. I, I will. I will. <laughs> he still wants but, us to review uh, them with him. <laughs> yes, it, it must happen. I already did that once, you motherfucker. You got, wait, did you guys do all it. three of them or just I one of them? Did. All of them. <laughs> oh, so we have on? Was that did on the e Rich channel that no longer yeah, exists? Yeah, that was on my deleted channel. I wish you would have archived yeah. that great podcast. I'm sure yeah, now we have to do it again, you know? Fuck no. We need to come up with some sort of, like, bet, and we'll only review those movies if Florian <laughs> wins. Wow. Mm. But but we have to get something of equal value if we win. <laughs> I mean, Florian. What, me watching 10 hours of something I don't like? Okay. Yeah. Florian, you have to sign over property to us if... Uh, no. You, you have to sign over the rights to Ballfrog to E-Rich. <laughs> Wow. He doesn't even <laughs> like it, you motherfucker. That's why I, 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 I don't even want the rights. Dollars? Yeah. <laughs> well, you probably would want them. You could promote it. <laughs> Get make, ah, could make I money. I definitely could. Instead of Bombadil, I'd be fucking frog, ball frog. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys want to plug anything other than ball frog? Well, I finally released my Rick and Morty video, and by the time this video comes out, it's probably like two weeks old, but you should definitely watch it. I spent a lot of time. It's 45 minutes of me analyzing Rick and Morty. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at T-Z-A-R-R-E-V-A-N. Uh, hey doll, Mary doll, ring a dong dillo, ring a dong, uh, Tom Bombadillo. And I'll say, if you liked Game of Thrones and uh, you don't want to watch the new show because it left a bad taste in your mouth, uh, I think House of the Dragon is in good hands. It's a good show. Uh, I would recommend that. If you're going to watch any fantasy prequel, you know, billion dollar series this uh, uh -huh. this fall, make it House of the Dragon. I agree that House of the Dragon fucking rules, so Hell yeah. I'm, I'm happy with both. But, yeah. yeah, it's great. I can't wait for, for episode three. Which I is on tonight. Oh yeah, I guess we got at least like one or two seasons before Martin t ruins it all somehow. <laughs> and there's I a new Rick and Morty on tonight. Seven seasons. I mean, he's ruined like Elden Ring too. Like that, the Laurie Knight movie uh, and, and that show is like dumb. It's a game. Like, what am I talking? <laughs> Jesus, Florian. Like all he, like the main thing he's done is name all the characters, and they all have retarded names that all start with M, and you can't keep them apart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I kidding. Mean, I would love to know how much he actually contributed to that game. Yeah, probably not that much, but <laughs> just the stupid names. Well, for is it Kino? I've been Simeon Jimmy. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.